this video covers creating a VPSA and getting it connected to your Amazon Virtual Private Cloud. In this case, we're, I'm assuming that you have logged into the VPSA Management Console. For publicly connected clouds, that's manage.zadara.storage.com. For private clouds, you will have a local address uh, that will be specific to your installation. In this case, we want to concentrate on the Create VPSA button, which is right here. And then in here, we can just choose a VPSA name, a description, which particular cloud provider to use, and which particular location of that cloud provider to specify. For this example, I'm using Amazon, and I'm going to use their Frankfurt location. And this is mainly because in my particular environment, I've got a lot of existing connections in our, um, already in my console for the US locations, and I don't want to confuse people. So I'll choose Frankfurt here. I'll choose a baby engine. You can also choose different size engine for different numbers of CPU, memory, and drive capacity there. Um, the more CPUs you have, the more responsive the VPSA is and the maximum number of clients uh, that each one can support goes up. So in this case, I'm going to just choose four of the five terabyte drives and I need to give the VPSA a name for video. VPSA for a video. There we go. Create a new virtual private storage array and submit. So normally if you're creating this for the first time, you would hit this create uh, VPSA button. The request would go off to the Zadara storage team and we would contact you uh, separately uh, regarding that. We, for most connections, we offer an onboarding session which covers what I'm about to cover um, in more detail. And with that, that's now going to be creating, it's launching, and then it will be booting, etc. While that's doing that, I'm going off to the Amazon console, and in this case, I've selected the right region, Frankfurt, and I can see I've got a VPC already created here. Now, to connect your VPC or virtual private cloud to Zadara Storage, we need to create a virtual private gateway or a VGW. Now in this case, I've already created it here. You would be creating, clicking on the create virtual private gateway, giving it a name. Now if Zadara is the only external entity that you're going to connect to, a name like Zadara is a good thing. Um, and then go through and hit create. And this takes a, a few minutes to create. Once it has been created, you would then select the VGW and choose this button which is attached to VPC. And that will present a pull down button saying which VPC you, you're connecting to. In most cases, you've only got the one VPC and so that um, will be easy to uh, do there. And then you would hit attach. And it would then say attaching for a while in there and then eventually say attached. Once it has been attached, you would then go to the Direct Connect uh, console here. Now I've put my services up in the top menu bar. You would normally see under Services, Networking, and then Direct Connect. Okay. And in this case, you would see under, I've got the connections here. These are our 10 gig fibers going into Amazon. I need to select the virtual interfaces. And one of these would be saying uh, you'd be offered two connections mark um, in here and you would need to accept each one. And for your view, you would have a button here marked accept virtual interface. You would choose that, make sure you choose the appropriate uh, VGW and eventually, it takes about two minutes or so, uh, it would go into a state available like all of these here. Now, Frankfurt at this the time of recording this video. We've only got a small number of uh, connections here uh, Which is why this isn't that large for some of our other areas. It is pretty large there So now I need to go back to the VPC console again services networking and VPC 
right? And then I need to choose the uh, verify which is my VPC again, VPC 985, that's how I remember them. And then go into the route tables for that particular VPC. There's only one here. Select that and then make sure that the route propagation tab has this propagate saying yes. If it doesn't say yes, you would click on edit here and put a check mark in there and, oops, and click on save. Once what this does, the, the VGW is setting up a BGP session between Amazon and the Zadara routers. This route propagate ensures that the route from Zadara, which is this field, this address here for Frankfurt, is automatically propagated into, into your uh, private cloud. And the other, the reverse is true. The address that you've got for your VPC, in this case 172.31.0.0/16, is propagated into the Zadara cloud. And so this would change propagated into being yes. Now, Again, th this may take a few minutes to establish, so you would be um, clicking that and hitting refresh a few times. So once that has been uh, set up, then you've got the networking side of connecting your virtual private cloud into your Zadara storage cloud set up. The next thing to do is to go back to the VPSA management console and seeing whether the VPSA is ready. And I can see here that it has already created, created itself and it is marked as ready. So I can go back to my Amazon console and jump to my EC2 console. So under compute and EC2. Now this connection between your virtual private cloud and the Zadara storage cloud, your VPSA is only accessible from anything running within your virtual private cloud. So in this case, I would need to create or log on to a new uh, EC2 instance to be able to forward my interface here into um, to the Zadara storage in your uh, VPSA. So in this case, I have, a, um, I have an instance already uh, set up here. It's a Windows one, so I'm going to start this up again. Um, instant state and start. Yes, I would like to start that. So this is a Windows instance and I'm choosing the Windows one solely because of the web browser um, that you've got within the Windows instance. I'm going to stop this particular video and resume the next one, which is configuring the VPSA.